Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Alan Cochran and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Adam Hills. We start with a round call if this is the answer. What is the question on the board of six categories? Alan, which category would you like? Politics, please. OK, your category is politics. The answer is 27. <coughs> what is the question? How many moons does Uranus <coughs> have? <laughs> I'm not sure it's political right now. Well, I don't know. <laughs> don't say you don't get the news from us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it in Dundee, how long does a day seem to last? <laughs> Is is it, would that be 27 hours or 27 days? Just the number 27. They've not, <laughs> they've not come up with the concept of either hours or days in Dundee. <laughs> they live in a timeless pit. <laughs> is it, if you're a footballer, how many times can you punch a DJ and get away with it? <laughs> is it, after how many miles of a marathon are you absolutely certain you've taken the wrong turning? <laughs> is it... How many Gurkhas actually know who Joanna Lumley is? <laughs> is it... Is how it... long was the trail of chocolate hobnobs I used to lure my gran through the doors of a Swiss clinic? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you start that trail? <laughs> Big were those hobnobs? Scotland. Yeah. It was just like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> one on the plane, one in Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it how many times a day does Russell Brand think of writing a joke, then give up and just shag someone? <laughs> is it how old is this year's winner of Middlesbrough's glamorous granny competition? <laughs> Is it how many times could I flick a peanut hard into Amanda Holden's face before she felt anything? <laughs> Is it how many people still have jobs? <laughs> it's the age of the Conservative MP who was elected at the Norwich by-election. You're absolutely right, yeah. Reverend Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the question I was looking for was, how old is Chloe Smith, the Conservative winner of the Norwich North by-election, the youngest ever female Tory MP? She took the seat from Labour. How did she describe herself? Um, 27 years old. Well, other than the 27 years old. Uh, did like, she, uh, did she of... describe herself as looking like a lesbian jockey? <laughs> She looks like who I hope Hello. would be starring in a porno version of Harry Potter. <laughs> Hello, Chloe. Welcome to public life. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I do find that I'm creeped out by politicians in their 20s. I just think there's something weird about somebody in their 20s being an elected MP. It's like people who dress their dog up in human clothes. It's just <laughs> wrong. She, to me, looks like a Labrador with a dicky bow pretending yeah. to be a waiter. It's just, <laughs> well, you it's just something wrong about Is it. Is she yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When you listen to a talk, I'm pretty sure if you ripped her face mm. off, it would just be a 50-year-old man drinking brandy, just going, oh, bugger. <laughs> <laughs> She's just so dull. Ripped her face off. Is there any yeah. other way you could have described that metaphor yeah. that well, involved <laughs> ripping her face <laughs> off? Hang on a minute, you called her a dog dressed up a minute ago. No, I said it was similar. It was jarring to me mentally in the same way that a dog dressed in human <clears> clothes <throat> is jarring. I didn't say, if you rip off her face... <laughs> There will be a puppy wearing a hat. Uh, going, oh, to be honest, it's not, it's not that big a win. I think if I had won Norwich North, yeah. I would have asked for the cash alternative. <laughs> <laughs> well, she billed herself as a typical Norwich lass. She's only got two eyes. <laughs> she's, a, she's a business consultant in Norwich. You feel you're paying too much interest in your loan? Well, let's put three chickens in the pentangle and see what happens. <laughs> no, I, my whole family come from East Anglia. And that I, explains I, yeah. a great yeah. deal here. They're <laughs> <laughs> saying, aren't they, that the Conservatives won this particular election, but in fact, the winner was in fact apathy, wasn't it? Mm. Because yeah. less than one in two people actually bothered to vote. Apathy usually is the winner with the British public, isn't it? What do we want? A pie and a kip. When do we want it? Whenever. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be crap anyway. <laughs> Coverage is my least favourite. Did you watch the coverage of it? Yeah, I, I they, did they, not. They just do that thing where they go, well, let's see what would happen if this was played across the country and 60% of the MPs became Tory and this is what the House of Commons would look like. And you're like, I can visualise that anyway. 
I have a mind. They should only show things that I can't visualise. Well, let's imagine that 80% of the seats were won by Tories and they weren't wearing any trousers in zero gravity. <laughs> Did you see, though, did you see when... Because, basically, they line up all the people who wanted to, uh, to win, or the candidates is the correct word there. They line up... <laughs> <laughs> they, li they line up... Don't, 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 don't. for the five-year-olds, how are they? And then they wanted to go oh, to the right. big house <laughs> on the Thames. There we go. <laughs> As I was going to say, gentlemen... <laughs> um, it, I forgot. No, no, I remember. Uh, it's, they lined up all the candidates, and there was a wonderful moment because they say how many votes they've got, and people go, ah, ah. And then the guy for the monster raving lunar party, when he, he got like 18 votes, he just went, yes! <laughs> Who wants a space hopper? <laughs> Do you know where he came, the Monster Raven Looney guy? Oh, How many bottom. candidates were there? Not even second from bottom, fourth from bottom. Yeah, yeah. There were three actual serious candidates who polled fewer votes than the Monster <laughs> Raven Looney guy. Well, how well would he do if he was a real loony? Like a guy in a rusty transit van with a bloody hammer? <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy that came in last actually got 23 votes. Yeah. That's probably not even his whole family. That's <laughs> few people that you know in your life. That's... That is actually a number that's four less than her age. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, a, it was an election that they didn't need to, to fair, have. Though, then they picked a candidate who caught swine flu. It <laughs> genuinely, Gordon Brown cannot do anything right. <laughs> Sometime in the next week, he is going to open, by accident, a portal to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've opened a portal to hell. <laughs> to be honest, this looks better than my constituency. <laughs> <laughs> the what economic figures, by the way, just back then, what economic figures came out to contribute to Labour's difficulty? Basically, the economy is shrinking faster than Lady Gaga's balls in the North Sea. <laughs> Exactly we are essentially <laughs> ruined, aren't we? That's why Alistair Darling, when he did the last budget, came out with the box in front of his face. <laughs> he looked like a paedophile climbing into a police van. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's auditioning for Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. There. <laughs> oh, that's, like, like, that's, that's him during a nativity play uh, in his yeah. school. He looks like Gordon there. Brown's just opened that gateway to hell behind him. <laughs> 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 and now he's hoping to host yeah. Mock the Week. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's really like... <laughs> the actual economic news, though, is that the only part of any company or financial institution in Britain that's still in the black is Alistair Darling's eyebrows. <laughs> how much, how much money would we have to have given the banks, right? We gave them tens of billions of pounds. How much money would it have had to have been for them to stop chaining their pens up? <laughs> right. the pens are chained up. Argos can do it. Argos can give you a pen, only because if they had a chain there, people would wear it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an expert on economics, but it seems very obvious to me that the economy, in general, is overly dependent on consumer spending, isn't it? And they keep scratching their heads. Every time you turn the news on, they go, ''Oh, not enough people are going out and spending. It's not going to fix it.'' And I think there's two ways of looking at that story. Maybe just everyone has got enough stuff. <laughs> Maybe everybody else is like me, watching the news in a house full of stuff they don't need, going, I don't need any more shit, thank you. <laughs> I don't want a book by Got Quan or a DVD by one of the several pricks on Top Gear. I've got enough stuff. <laughs> the, reason, the reason consumer spending right, went down is loads of our shops are rubbish. I mean, was, it, was anyone surprised that Woolworths went out of business <laughs> with their incredible business plan? Or let's buy up a lot of prime city centre real estate and use it to sell one and two pence sweeties. <laughs> <laughs> and let's put the sweeties quite close to the door so they're easier to shoplift. <laughs> and then let's fill the rest of the store with varying sizes of paint roller. Let's have three out of the four walls covered in paint rollers. <laughs> but get this, no paint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually doing quite well out of the recession. Because oh, really? uh, I keep picking, picking up corporate gigs as a comedian. And the last one I turned up to, I said, why have you booked me? And they said, because we couldn't afford Dara, Russell or Frankie. <laughs> Fight for so Do you know, on the, uh, on the Woolworths thing, when Woolworths closed down and we told my nine-year-old daughter that Woolworths had closed down, we used to go... <laughs> bit, did you gather around? We've got no, some no. terrible news. <laughs> no, <she was> <laughs> Oh, British, British, British Put your black dress on, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliantly said, cos you used to do a sort of a range of sort of like dressing up clothes and stuff like that. I said, I'm really sad that Woolworths have closed down. And she went, oh, 
where will I buy my shoes? <laughs> And, but, but, you know, for all the uh, labour about, uh, about gimmicks, the Tories have outlined a new demographic that they're after. Did you see that during oh, the week? Oh, Holby City women. Yeah, Holby City women. They said the Holby City women, the kind of women that work in the NHS. Yeah. But then the rest of the quote was, um, people who had voted Labour in the past but have been turned off by the macho culture surrounding Gordon Brown. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. Talking of which... <laughs> I, do, we, do you have a different definition of macho in Britain? <laughs> At what point is Gordon Brown much of? No, no, because behind Glorious, he's, uh, he's stripped off, oiled. Yeah. They've actually tried to rebrand Gordon Brown. They've tried to make him smile. Yeah. They've given him new clothes. They've yeah. tried to make him wet. Nothing has worked. If there was a slogan for him right now, it would be Gordon Brown, you can't polish a turd. <laughs> Yeah, that round of applause for Frankie Hugh and Adam. <laughs> now we play a round called Mockter Quinn Medicine Woman. This game <laughs> <laughs> involves <laughs> Alan, Adam, Andy, and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand up skills. We spin our news generator, settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge who have produced the funniest stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is religion. Who wants to come in on that? Adam yeah, like Why can you make fun of certain religions? Why can you use certain religions to promote your products and not other? Why can you use Buddha to promote products? You go to any city in the world, you will find a Buddha bar that serves karma cocktails. You, you will find a chocolate Buddha restaurant with carvings of Buddha down the wall. You get, if you go to a supermarket right now, I'm sure you'll find a brand of margarine called I Can't Believe It's Not Buddha. <laughs> Why can you do that with Buddha and no other religious leader? You know why? Because there's no such thing as a Buddhist extremist. <laughs> what are they going to do? Turn up at your restaurant? Yeah, if you keep calling it that... Oh, I've got no choice but to wish you good karma. Shit! <laughs> you could not do that with any other religious icon. You couldn't have a gym only open on Sunday mornings called Jehovah's Fitness. <laughs> well done, Adam Hill. OK. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is transport. Who wants to come in that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> We've now got ads telling us from the government how to use a level crossing. Now, you'd have thought it was fairly obvious, but apparently the problem is sometimes the barrier goes across the road, but it doesn't go all the way to the other side. And people think, oh, well, it's gone down on my side, but I mean, I can go around the outside, <laughs> and I can go across. And you're thinking, do we need to spend thousands of government pounds telling people how to use a level crossing? Surely it's just a new form of natural selection. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Alan and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is fashion. Who wants to come in? Alan. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. <laughs> I, uh, I'm at a funny age. It's, uh, it's hard to get clothes right, I think. Uh, somebody explained to me that there's a theory that the day you pick something up and think, is this too young for me, that is the day that some clothing has got too young for you. <laughs> and I'm only in my early 30s, but I've had it happen already. I picked something up the other day, I thought, is this too young for me? And it was. It was some of those trainers with wheels on the heels. <laughs> I think clothes matter. My mind was changed on this last December. I saw a big issue seller in the street dressed as Santa. <laughs> yeah, it's fine for us, for adults, but it was daylight, there was children in the street, and I could see one little boy looking at the big issue seller and then looking at his mum as if to say, it's not looking good for my PlayStation 3 this year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Alan. OK, Russell, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The subject, Russell, is etiquette. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like ladies with pointy breasts carrying books in a weird way. <laughs> I'm really socially awkward. I met Jonathan Ross the other day, I got really excited. I was having a wee backstage at a gig, and he went, you're thingamajig, aren't you? And for some reason, I went, I can be whoever you want me to be. <laughs> now, in a toilet, that is just a come-on, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> and with women, it's even worse. I was on a train the other day, and this lady went, excuse me, can you look after my bags whilst I go to the toilet? Now, in that situation, all you've got to do is go, yes. But for some reason, I panicked and went, you're not allowed to go and it's in the station. <laughs> <laughs> So she sits down, going, fair enough, didn't realise you were the poo goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible moment. Well, the train wouldn't move. Eventually it did, I swear, she looked at me and went, can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, what's up? I think that round, the points go to Adam Allen! Our next round is called Headliners. Here is a typical picture of Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi. <laughs> but what does B-I-T-S stand for? <laughs> it doesn't just mean bits, no. all right? So it's not bol it's... bolognese is a too spicy. <laughs> no. Is it Berlusconi is Tati Bojangle Squeezer? <laughs> is he just auditioning people? Is he going, bend over, impressive. That's satisfactory. <laughs> Is it boys? I think it's syphilis. <laughs> Alan, is it uh, Berlusconi imitates Tyrannosaurus statue? <laughs> <laughs> is it beaten in the Second World War? <laughs> <laughs> is it Berlusconi il toro shago? <laughs> is it basically I'm Tony Soprano? <laughs> Has anyone got anything that approaches the kind of answer? Berlusconi in tape scandal. Yes, that's right. Well done. Thank you very much. Hey. The answer I was looking for was Berlusconi in tape scandal recently released audio recordings detailing conversations alleged to be between escort Patrizia Daddario and a man alleged to be Berlusconi have led to uncomfortable questions about his personal and political life. The Prime Minister's approval rating has dipped below 50% for the first time. Time. That's what it took. <laughs> it took actual <laughs> tapes. Tapes that could not be played to any member of the government here apart from Jackie Smith's husband, who said they are really good. It's so wonderful, though, isn't it? Because you're meant to go, oh my God, isn't it appalling? But when you find out he's 72 and she's 40, you can't help but go, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he was your granddad. Imagine that. Because when he was asked, said you had sex with a prostitute, did he, did he apologise? No, he went, hey, I'm no saint. <laughs> but I'm, I'm no saint isn't a defence or an answer. To, did you have sex it's with not, a prostitute? Not, yeah. so he's got, I'm no saint. That's just a bizarre non sequitur. <laughs> have you had someone killed, Mr Berlusconi? Well, I didn't invent penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he said more than just I'm no saint. The actual full quote was, there are a lot of pretty girls about. <laughs> I am no saint. <laughs> So in some ways he did clarify. He's I think we can take that as a large he's looking, yes. He's looking at this. Uh, he said what the tapes actually said, though. <laughs> On the tapes, he says to the escort girl, wait there for me in the big bed. And she <laughs> says, which one is that? The one with the curtains. And you think, how many beds are there? In the, where is he shagging her? Is he, in the, is he in the bed section at Ikea? <laughs> Tonight, we will do it in the big bed. Tomorrow, we will do it on the bed with the ladder with the children's desk underneath. <laughs> <laughs> How sexy is actually? Uh, this is OK for a 72-year-old man. What's their version of Last of the Summer Wine like? <laughs> it's just like porn. Yes, Watch let's get in the bath. Let's all get into the bath. <laughs> no, the bath stockings are wrinkly because they're up and down 20 times a day. <laughs> he was asked about all the, all the wild parties at his house as well because they've been going off for ages. And he said something like, as long as I'm there, nothing inelegant will happen because I am a man of good taste and character. Or, as it's known in a legal fraternity, the Barrymore defence. Yes. <laughs> and how, um, what, what did she want in return for this? She wanted a B and B. <laughs> Bizarrely, it's generally true. She wanted a B and B. And Berlusconi went, Well, what I'll give you begins with B and B. What she actually said was that she asked for the she asked for it to get it was like rezoning or to get a, a permit. Yeah. Uh, and then she said, rather then sending around two people to resolve my property problem, I was offered a seat in the European Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is full-on seduction yeah. right it's there. It's an incredible land of sleaze and scandal, isn't it? Can you imagine how tame our expenses scandal looked to them? In Italy, they'd be like, have you, have you claimed for a bath plug? No, that should read butt plug. <laughs> 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 the cabinet meetings must be like a pool party in Sir Mixalot's house. It just, it's, <laughs> it's probably just 20 18 year old swimwear models with sprinklers that come on every hour on the hour. 
Wah, wah, they all get up and dance for a while. Like, Home secretary, work it harder. <laughs> this is just the reason we have sex scandals is that we're supposed to be attracted to strong, confident women, but we're not. We're actually attracted to broken, neurotic women because we know that they'll be dirty in bed. <laughs> so if you go out with a date and with, with someone and, and on the first date, they go, uh, I had a great relationship with my father. Inside you're going, damn. <laughs> My stepfather, on the other hand, back in the game. <laughs> if you're having dinner, if you're having dinner with 20 escorts, <laughs> what, what, is the, what is the polite time to go? Well, that's enough dinner. Uh, what is the, it's clearly you all know you're not there for dinner. Like, I mean, it, do you have to go, ah, oh, my penis is now al dente. Let us leave the table. <laughs> I'm disgusted at the idea of... Him. I couldn't watch him having sex. It'd be like watching an Egyptian mummy trying to post a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite unlikely you'd be asked to watch him having sex. I don't oh, know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I wouldn't rule out anything with Berlusconi. So it's interesting because uh, recently one of the papers did a, um, a phrase book and there is a politics version of it and it included this phrase. Che onore, il primo ministro vuole fare il amore con nostra nipote. Which means, what an honour, the Prime Minister wants to sleep with our granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. In other news, what are, they, what are Labour, according to the Daily Mail, what are Labour threatening in terms oh, of council tax? Oh, it's hilarious. Attacks on patios, Dara. Attacks on patios. It's By the way, that is a, a tax <laughs> on words. patios, not yeah. a tax <laughs> on patios. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Labour <laughs> come around <laughs> in the middle of the night <laughs> and just <laughs> smash up your patio. <laughs> That's for having a patio! Yeah. 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 You've been taxed on nice views, aren't you, basically? So, basically, if I have a view over one of Girls Allowed, I've got to pay more money, unless it's the ginger one, in which case I get a rebate. <laughs> <laughs> the story was it, seems, it seems incredible to me. It seems incredible that we've been taxed on every improvement and, and, and taxed on everything that's good about where we live. So, basically, now, the ideal home would be a shipping container <laughs> and the Daily Mail would hate immigrants even more because they say, oh, they're coming over here and taking our shipping container. <laughs> moved on to a shipping container, they'd still get you because you'd have a sea view. <laughs> but the difference was apparently now that inspectors can go into your house and could stand in your house and go, this is very nice, you have a beautiful view of the ocean. And even if you go, I don't like the ocean personally, I get seasick, <laughs> I spend my time on the other side of the house looking at my neighbours. What's that worth? <laughs> that. So how much you have to pay for that? Are there any loopholes? Are there any lo like, say you've got a view of a mountain but you're blind? Surely you'd have to But pay that for would that. be a good one, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or tapping, maybe you're a away. student and you go, well, how can I have to pay for the extra view? I don't get up until it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> we overlooked the lake where my wife drowned. <laughs> do, you pay, do you pay less if you have a rubbish view? Because surely that should yeah. be the case. Yeah, you'd, it would be. you'd hope so. I'll tell you what, the worst view in England, I'd use, on my road, there's an old folks' home and they stare opposite a funeral director's. <laughs> <laughs> it's bleaker than that. The only way you can make that worse if there's someone outside dressed as death just sharpening a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it a trail of hobnobs leading into the funeral? <laughs> Nothing better to do with their time. The economy's in free fall. We're locked in some sort of pointless war. They've got nothing better to do than take pictures from space of my fucking shed. <laughs> which, if you're watching, I don't have. <laughs> People used to say, don't shit on your own doorstep. Now, you should shit on your own doorstep because it'll knock a few quid off your council tax. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the end of that round, the point's going to Russell Alan <laughs> OK, now we come to our final quick-fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on a consumer programme. I'm Adrian Childs, <laughs> and I was shocked by the new Shrek film. <laughs> I've not been paid for it, but I seem to be starring in it. <laughs> Consumer scams are on the increase. If you'd like to find out how to stop them, send us your name and address, your date of birth and your mother's maiden name. <laughs> I've just found out my jumper was made by Indian slave children. Can I just say they did a wonderful job? <laughs> Next, we speak to Barbara, who was devastated when she bought Daniel Bedingfield tickets 
that turned out to be genuine. <laughs> At first, the company seemed willing to compromise. Then we sent them a letter from Nicky Campbell and they told us to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be on this show next week because I'm going off to Nigeria to pick up my lottery winnings. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, we said that we were going to expose London's security scene. This week, we say, there's been a misunderstanding. Could I please have my kids back? <laughs> On closer inspection, Mrs Wilkins, your hamster's jacuzzi would appear to be a food blender. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Nicky Campbell, and I've been ploughing through the usual five sacks of hate mail <laughs> to find this letter complaining about washing powder. <laughs> <laughs> Today, as I stand before you penniless in the last clothes I own, we ask, is divorce biased in favour of the greedy bitch who left me? <laughs> <laughs> we got there, the weather were crap, the food were crap, the locals were racist. What a bloody brilliant holiday! <laughs> <laughs> of the half dozen condoms we tested, all but two burst in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anne Robinson, <laughs> and without plastic surgery, I'd look like E.T.'s balls. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things a sports commentator would never say. Oh, they've called in the video referee. Which is better, alien or predator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and that's a beautiful uppercut. And another one. But, hey, the DJ is still not going to mm. change the track <laughs> for Stephen <laughs> Gerrard. <laughs> Jimmy White holding up the cue there as he collapses at the telenoid bins. <laughs> Welcome to Robot Wars. Cruncher, ready! Stephen Hawkins, ready. <laughs> and England have won the Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the women's 100 metres final, and from left to right, it's no, no, yes, <laughs> maybe, from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> The Queen smashes Camilla in the face and Prince Philip hits her with a hammer. This is what I call a royal rumble. <laughs> <laughs> Venus Williams has brought something different to the ladies' game. Male genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's great with a dead ball. When I had one, I had to sit down for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh... I think that massive widescreen close-up of the wedgie goes some way to explaining why we don't normally televise judo. <laughs> <laughs> and that bloody smear is the reason you don't see a lot of streakers in Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> some people on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. The Chinese secret police have shot them. <laughs> Well, he's finally got his head down, his hands are firmly round the shaft. Which is why I'm handing over to John Inverdale. <laughs> <laughs> overpaid, overpaid, knocks it on to overrated. Overrated <laughs> on to possible rapist, possible <laughs> rapist, knocks it forward, <laughs> plods it gay, goal! <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that, the boys with a Frankie Hugh and Adam! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Adam Hills. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Alan Cochran and Russell Howard. <laughs> I'm Darrell Breen. Thank you for watching. Good night. It's been a very dark place, but we're finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The last in the series of Psychoville is on the way at 10 here on BBC Two. And stay with us for Nevermind the Buzzcocks, next.